I've got a big announcement I want to share with you. In, in fact, I kind of have two announcements I want to share with you, but I also want to tell you about the process that I go through to make the decisions to go in, this, in these directions in the first place. Because especially right now, everybody's making goals and New Year's resolutions, at the beginning of the year, all that stuff. Setting goals doesn't work for me. I used to try to set goals. I have an older brother and he would constantly tell me, hey Lee, you gotta write down your goals. Because if you just write down the goal, you'll be much more likely to achieve it than the people that don't write down their goals at all. You'll be much more successful, more productive, just write down the goals. So I would write down the goals because he's very successful. I was like, well, if he's doing it, I should do it too. And I'd write down these goals. But the thing that would be so, so problematic is Sometimes I wouldn't hit the goal. Like I wouldn't achieve the goal that I wrote down. And then I would feel like I lost. Like it was like deflating. And, and then I started to get anxiety over writing down the goals because I was like, well, what if I don't hit it? And then I would start reducing the goals to something smaller. So I would start making shorter, less aggressive goals. And I was like, well, th this isn't even worth pursuing because it's, it, the whole, it just was a mess. Like it just didn't work for me at all, all the way to the point where I just gave up and, the, and just didn't write, write goals at all until I had this mindset shift, this complete breakthrough that radically changed the productivity and the success of my life. And I want to share with you because if you're like me where you feel anxiety over goals, try this out because this was huge for me. And what it was, was rather than focusing on the goals, to focus on the process it takes to achieve the goal without really too much emphasis on the actual outcome. So like Annie Duke wrote this book. It's called Thinking in Bets. It came out, I don't know, five years ago or so. And there's this quote from the book that really underscores this concept perfectly. And what she says is, what makes a decision great is not that it has a great outcome. A great decision is the result of a good process. And it's about the, so like what she's talking about with, with, with that quote is the process is accumulating all the facts and all the knowledge and all the information that you can, knowing that you don't have all of the information you need to, to perfectly predict the future, but you have a really solid process. You're not just chasing shiny objects all the time and just, oh, that looks interesting. Let's go there. Let's, oh, that looks interesting. Let's do that. Because like chasing shiny objects and constantly switching gears without a good process, you'll never get anywhere. Like that's, that's just, people stay broke because of that exact problem. So I didn't want to do that, but if you follow the process, everything is so much better for you. So here's an example of what I mean by that, because I take this like a step further. So instead of saying something like, I wish I made a million dollars this year, or, or whatever the financial, a hundred thousand dollars this year, whatever, or I wish I had 5,000 YouTube subscribers, which would be great. I'd love to have 5,000 subscribers. <laughs> so if you like this, feel free to give me a thumbs up and a like and a subscribe. I really appreciate that. I'd love to see the notifications pop up and, and you know, talk with you in the comments and everything. So, so thank you for doing that. I love it. But rather than setting the goal of 5,000 subscribers, what I would do is I would say, if I were the kind of person who had 5,000 subscribers, what would I do with the decision before me right now? You see what I mean? So now you've got this day-to-day, -day, you know, decision-by-decision -decision formula for figuring out what to do. So like you think to yourself, like maybe it's the financial, I want to make a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars or whatever. It's like if I was the kind of person that was making a million dollars, would I do this thing or would I not do this thing? Or it doesn't even have to be business. It could be just life or health. It's like if I want to lose 20 pounds, would I eat this Twinkie or would I not eat the Twinkie? If I was that kind of a person who, who was already losing the weight, what decision would I make about the thing that I'm about to eat or whatever? And that's been completely life-changing for me for, for really two reasons. One reason is it gives you that day-to-day -day action plan. Like a decision comes up and you think, if I was the kind of person making a million dollars a year, would I do this thing or not do this thing? Would I easily give up or would I not easily give up? Would I chase the shiny object? Would I stick with what I'm doing? You know, see what I mean? So you like have instant action and so you know what to do. But you all, but for me at least, I also had this freedom where it's like, I didn't feel the anxiety over hitting the outcome by the flip of the year. So for example, what if you have a goal? I want to make $100,000 this year. You get to the end of the year, you only made $90,000. And you're like, w that would happen to me. And I'd be like, well, man, I'm, I'm, I'm sad now. Like, I feel like I lost. Like, I, I didn't make the hundred grand. But why would, I, why would I do that to myself? Like, why wouldn't I be happy about the fact I just made 90 grand? <laughs> like, so, so like, I feel like that's why goals doesn't work for me. So what I would do instead would be like, oh, what I did this year was so successful that it went from zero to 90 grand in a year. That's awesome. So what if I keep doing it next year too? I'll probably far surpass my $100,000 goal. I'll probably hit 100,000 by February. And then look what might happen by the end of the year after that, right? It's so like you don't give, it's kind of like buying stocks. It's like you don't lose money until you sell. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, if you're not at the value that you want, don't sell out yet. Just like keep going. It's so like the big shift is rather than focusing on the individual outcomes or the individual goals, focusing on the process that it takes to get there and just, just enjoy the incremental process that's going in the right direction. 
So when I make decisions or whatever for new, like new year's resolutions, the emphasis is on the resolve. Like I resolve to do this thing for at least a year. Like when I make like resolutions like this, I, the, the time frame window is no shorter than one year. And what I really like to do is I like to do five year things. Like, like I, I want to do something for five years before I decide to give up or whatever. Because the number one thing that tends to wreck your progress is just giving up far too soon. Like you, you, you're launching a new business, try to get some leads for a month or two. You're not really getting the momentum you want. Like, oh, this doesn't work. It's like, that's nuts. Like, I can't even tell you how many times people say, well, I ran some Facebook ads and Facebook ads don't work. It's like, what do you mean Facebook ads don't work? Facebook ads are bringing in billions of dollars all the time. It's like, they might not be working for you. Like maybe you have the wrong audience or maybe you don't have the right message or maybe your landing page isn't converting or maybe the offer is no good or the price is too high or whatever. It's like, there's all kinds of things that might be messing it up. There's all kinds of variables. So why don't we just look and see what's working and then kind of keep kind of tweaking in the variables along the way and then it'll work for you. Just don't give up too soon. That's the, that's the whole idea behind it. So I had two big decisions. So here's the announcements. One was, it's 2023 and I felt like I needed to shift, shift gears with regard to the WordPress themes that we use. So... Uh, I have a whole link in the description. I don't, not, not going to go through all the bullet points right here. If you want to, if you're interested in all the details, check the link and you'll see this whole write up. But I have like maybe, I don't know, 10 or 11 reasons why we switched to Cadence. So I switched to Cadence both for Double Stack, which is the, the mentoring program, like the, the small group mentoring program that I have, but also with Blue Theory. So Blue Theory is actually the big announcement because we, we announced Blue Theory last November kind of tentatively, like this, you know, here's this, this new community that you might want to try. It was just a page on the DoubleStack website. It was kind of like the community behind DoubleStack. And it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I would talk to people and maybe I didn't have enough space in DoubleStack itself. Like it was full. And I hated saying, I don't have anything for you. And instead I wanted to be able to say, well, here's something that we can do that's really affordable and as many people as, as want to join can, like you can look and see what we're going to do. And if it seems like the right thing for you, jump on in and I can help you there. And so it's a much larger community. And what we did was basically I took the same web design package, or, or at least our most popular web design package from, from DoubleStack and what we've been doing in our agency, and just kind of copied the blueprint into Blue Theory. And now you can see like there's five pillars to the offer. So you can see all five things that we do, what we charge, what we say on the website, everything all the way down to how we get leads and onboard clients. And, I, and you can kind of copy and paste that package into your business. And since it's a community, you can like post questions to me or direct message me, or we do live calls on Thursdays. And so we have this whole community around it so you can get the help that you need. And you've got a bunch of different recorded kind of like video lessons for like lead generation and and then like how to do local SEO. And, th and there's a bunch of like educational content, but there's also the community aspect of it. And it started growing and we've now branched that off into its own website. It's its own thing. Now you can, uh, I'll put a link in the description for that too. We can just go to lead.blue and boom, there's a whole website all about blue theory. So I got the domain name lead.blue, which is pretty cool. So there's no.com or anything on the end. It's literally just lead.blue and boom, you'll see it. Check it out and see what you think. But there's a workshop that I just posted on there that really goes into the details of what the whole five pillar offer is. And you can just go to lead.blue slash workshop, or I'll put a link in the description for that too. And it's totally free. You don't have to buy anything. It's all sitting right there. And you can see exactly what goes into the, into the offer, what services we're offering, what we say on our website, how to get the leads. Like all of that's in the actual workshop that you can totally get to for free. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Or if you'd like to see why maybe your site's not developing the leads or, or generating the leads that you want, maybe you're offering like a free site audit or a free consultation, check out this next video and I'll tell you exactly why I thought offering free site audits and consultations would be a good lead magnet, but why it's actually a bad one and we tripled our revenue when we stopped offering site reviews. <laughs> check out that video right there and I'll show you how that works.